the RISD Hyundai Research Collaborative is an opportunity to explore the future of mobility with students and faculty at RISD, as well as lead designers at Hyundai Motor Group. We worked in parallel to think through the challenges that they're facing. They're very interested in addressing vital concerns of the automotive industry related to waste. And actually, we're leaning into future projects related to the future of cities. So we've even stepped back a layer from this question of mobility in the car to actually the broader environment that we're building through which we move. They're not just doing cars, right? Like it's a huge company that has a fact of over economy and construction and so many other things within Korea. Hyundai is also very well known as a supporter of the arts. And I think that openness was very present in our collaboration. We selected some faculty that would work with us, Paolo Cardini, Sean Greenlee, Anastasia Reyna, Anna gittleson Khan. They really helped us design the approach. Going into this project, I wanted to connect with a corporate organization and how our skills can actually translate. And I sometimes forget how much thinking and design actually happens in the world. Our colleagues at Hyundai are also very excited to work with next generation artists and designers because we do have a good component of fine arts students connected to the project. And I think they find it really fertilizing for all their practice to see the questions the students are asking. The patience and the deep, quiet listening to sometimes really ambitious, crazy sounding ideas that come up. I have just been floored by how open-minded everyone that we've communicated with has been. We need to think about how our practices are sustainable. So at RISD, the Nature Lab is a lead partner in the project in thinking through living systems, biology, and even insects to understand how we might be informed by nature. At the Nature Lab, we serve as a resource to teach artists and designers how to design and create by, with, and for nature. So using biomimicry principles, looking at how nature solves design problems, not only in form and structure, but also in terms of the materiality that's used and the systems that are involved. It's just so gratifying to have that opportunity and help to inform what this industry giant is doing for the future. The COVID experience created different kinds of engagements, which actually led to summer research activity, which wasn't intended, which included summer jobs for students in deeper conversation with Hyundai because they didn't have distractions of their other courses. And then some of that work exhibited in the Hyundai Design Center to see what both the students produced at RISD, but also the parallel production of ideas that was happening with the Hyundai designers along the same set of themes. And the students and the faculty did some amazing projects is more open-ended research, questioning ourselves and our surroundings, focusing on the final problem of the future. You know, that's one of the things that is exciting for me. A lot of the work that we were able to do was because of the kind of freedom that we were given to just explore, but also to fail and to recontextualize what we've done. I think without that kind of freedom to try again and to reimagine the project through various iterations, it just wouldn't have ultimately been as effective. Everything is connected, everything is complex. It's really when to design and why to design. And I think that's pretty important, not just for a school, but also for industries. Something that I was excited to learn was a way to use art making as a research process and just that beauty and in investigation. Being able to understand that the process of making and the process of getting there was also equally as valid as the final outcomes was a really unique perspective in terms of how I've been viewing my studio practice. We can have really small groups of really focused research. Speculative thinking and design exists mainly in academia in order to ignite imagination, but it's not something that we see being applied in a corporate setting. 
Companies, as they grow larger, begin to become structurally rigid as opposed to more entrepreneurial attempts to gauge what the landscape is and take risks. I think Paolo said it concisely when he said, if your research methods are rigid, then the outcomes become a reflection of that method. So the medium becomes the message in that case, as opposed to leaving it open and having the scope sort of expand as you're researching. All of our students is from different backgrounds. We have philosophy, fine art, engineering. I think that is the future trend, is to collaborate. Being able to work with people from a variety of disciplines who I really wouldn't have encountered otherwise in my RISD education or even maybe my professional career, I think is what was the most like exciting for me because it really gave me sort of a new perspective on both my own making, but also understand what you personally bring to the table. We were able to tailor some of the lectures to fit the directions that they were going in. You know, one group was really interested in lightness and we were able to talk about the structure of bones and the structure of wings and what makes things able to fly more easily. There's a shallow level of understanding that, forms and things that look like natural forms. And then there's a deep level of use of the systems that have developed over many millions of years to sustain them and enrich in the lives of everything that shares the same space. Finding a way to communicate that to designers and artists in a way that changes their starting place or their underlying goals and forms the sustainable, regenerative choices that they make. I don't know of any other school that has the uniqueness of having a nature lab staffed with the tools of science that are there to support artistic and design inquiry. It's a natural history museum, it's a library, it's a laboratory, it's a makerspace, it's all these things wrapped together. You have an outside organization who really sees how unusual we are, sees the kind of work our students can do, undergraduates as well as the graduate students who are on the project, and it reminds us that there's really something special here. There's really some special approach to making and knowing that a huge, massive organization like Hyundai finds to be inspiring to what they do. I think that's what I learned from this whole experience is how we generate different research findings and outcomes into a more understandable documentation. And I think that's what design is good at, to communicate through different ways of storytelling. When they engage with our students and faculty, there's this real connection. It drives change in their ideas. I was a little speechless when I, uh, <laughs> to be honest, I didn't expect this at all. So it's actually quite fresh, delighted wake up call in the morning here in Korea. But this way you guys are approaching the process and also level of the presentation is so good. What if we open up the definitions that you're presenting with us and take it a different direction? And I think you kind of need that engagement. It kind of opens up a door for us to ask, what other partners could we work with in order to stimulate positive change in the world beyond RISD? This work really brought together some of the themes that RISD is really invested in. Novel ways of making and knowing, sustainable futures, diverse and inclusive futures. I think a lot of artists and designers, especially you know, as you're just being trained, they don't realize the incredible impact on the cultures and society in our world that they have. They are making our future. And so to be able to deeply inform that making, I think is just an amazing example of RISD being true to what their strategic goals are. And whenever you're talking about creating a more sustainable future, you're talking about a more just and equitable future because a sustainable planet sustains all of us. I only hope that this type of research model continues to be adapted throughout multiplicity of departments so we do get a chance to work very closely with our students as well as external partners. We're serving the students in their education to give them a place where they can enter conversations, demonstrate their skill, their thoughtfulness, and apply them to real world situations. In 10 years, they will be the ones who will be helping rectify injustices, helping to design future communities, cities, products and objects, leading as fine artists the conversation about what should art be, what should art do, how does one practice in different materials and media, how does 
with one question and break the boundaries in those media. So if they're in a place where they're able to act without authority, it's just a launching pad for the next steps that they'll take.